Mr. Carnegie, you have stated in previous interviews that there are no limitations to mental capacity except those an individual sets up in his own mind. And you have explained this by saying that defeat can be converted into a priceless asset if one takes the right attitude toward it. Will you now explain what is the right attitude? First of all, let me say that the right attitude toward defeat is that which refuses to accept it as anything more than temporary. And this is an attitude that one can best maintain by so developing his willpower that he looks upon defeat as a challenge to test his mettle. That challenge should be accepted as a signal that has been deliberately hoisted to inform him that his plans need mending. Defeat should be looked upon in precisely the same manner that one accepts the unpleasant experience of physical pain, for it is obvious that physical pain is nature's way of informing one that something needs attention and correction. Pain, therefore, may be a blessing and not a curse. The same is true of the mental anguish one experiences when overtaken by defeat. While the feeling is unpleasant, it may be, nevertheless, beneficial, because it serves as a signal by which one may be stopped from going in the wrong direction. I see your logic, but defeat sometimes is so definite and severe that it has the effect of destroying one's initiative and self-reliance. What is to be done in such a circumstance? Here is where the principle of self-discipline comes to one's rescue. The well-disciplined person allows nothing to destroy his belief in himself and permits nothing to stop him from rearranging his plans and moving ahead when he is defeated. You see, he changes his plans if they need change, but not his purpose. If one has mastered the principle of organized thought, one knows that the power of will is equal to all the circumstances of life, and he allows nothing to destroy his will to win.